Hi there and welcome to this week's video. It's Yasmin here and this week I'm going to be talking all about protein. So protein is one of our three macronutrients, which means that along with carbohydrates and fats, we need to be consuming the, those in the largest amounts as opposed to all of our micronutrients such as vitamins and minerals and they definitely need to make an appearance in our diets every day. So protein is a bit of a buzzword in the fitness and muscle gain industry, but actually the benefits of protein stretch so much further than this in terms of our health. So today I'm going to be talking all about five ways in which protein is really important for your health other than muscle repair and strengthening. And do you know how much you should be getting? Listen to the end of this video to find out exactly how much you should be getting and some examples of protein servings in portions of food. So number one is for reason why protein is important is balancing blood sugar levels. So in its simplest form, blood sugar levels are representing the amount of sugar that is in our blood at any given time. And our blood sugar levels are dependent on a few things. One of those is the type of carbohydrates we are consuming. So carbohydrates that we call simple carbohydrates are very, very easy for our body to break down due to less fiber content and processing that would have happened in the factory before it arrives at, on our plates and in our mouths. Therefore, um, the body doesn't take very long to break it down and the, the um, food is broken down into sugar and converted to energy for our muscles to use quite quickly. On the flip side of this, carbohydrates such as whole grains, such as oats and legumes, such as chickpeas and lentils, take our body much longer to break down because they contain much more fibre and have not had as much processing done to them. So these are called more complex carbohydrates. So our body will break these down at different rates dependent on the source of carbohydrate. And the second um, factor in how quickly food affects our blood sugar levels is whether or not there is the presence of protein. So protein um, takes our body longer to digest and it stays within the digestive system for longer and it's what we call a buffer to the carbohydrate breakdown. So if we combine our carbohydrates with a good source of protein at meals and snacks, this will ensure that our blood sugar levels remain more stable and the increase in blood sugar levels is a lot more steady rather than a sharp spike in blood sugar levels that we might get if we consume protein on its own. Um, and it's also great for hormone balance, so female hormone balance, because the um, hormone involved in blood sugar level balancing is insulin, and insulin will have a knock-on effect on our other hormones too. So the second reason why protein is so important is for satiety. So satiety is another word for, for feeling full or feeling um, satisfied after a meal. Now, as I just said before, protein takes longer for our body to break down and it therefore will remain in the stomach for a longer period of time than carbohydrates do. So this is really important if you're wanting to either lose weight or maintain weight or simply um, feel fuller after your meals. It's gonna be really important to get a good source of protein in there. And this will also be helpful if you're trying to minimize or cut down on mindless snacking and grazing throughout the day. The third reason why protein is really important for our bodies is for the immune system. So although um, vitamin C tends to take most of the spotlight when we talk about the immune system, did you know that a lot of our immune cells, such as antibodies and our T cells, are made up of proteins? Therefore, if we don't have enough protein in our diet through um, what we're eating, then our body won't be able to make the immune cells as efficiently as possible. So if you are looking to strengthen and build your immune system, protein is definitely an element that we need to be considering. The fourth reason why protein is so important is for our mental health. So proteins are made up of amino acids 
and there are nine which we call essential amino acids and these are because they our body cannot make them and they must come from our diet. So one of these amino acids is called tryptophan which is usually found in food sources such as turkey, salmon and eggs. Now tryptophan once we've eaten it can be converted into serotonin which is a brain chemical or a neurotransmitter that is known as our happy hormone. So we need the tryptophan in order to make serotonin for us to feel happier, to feel better um, and for us to feel good. So it's really important um, that we are including sources of protein to get this um, tryptophan into our diet. Um, and the fifth and final reason why protein is really important is for our bone health. So protein is vital for strengthening and building up our bones. So it's really essential when we are aging. Um, and this is especially important for women that are going through the menopause or post-menopausal because estrogen, which is one of our female sex hormones that takes a steady decline um, during the menopause or after the menopause. Um, estrogen is protective and strengthening for our bones. So once a woman has gone through this transition, protein will be even more important to try and ensure that their bones are as healthy as possible. Um, eating enough protein and having strong bones is also associated with a lower risk of falls and fractures in the elderly. So if you um, or have close relatives or friends that are elderly, then their protein content of their diets is something that you should really be trying to consider or just having a think about, are they getting enough protein? Where is the protein coming from? So how much protein do you need? Now, this is something that is dependent on your weight, so it will be different for everyone. But the general recommendation is to be consuming about 0.8 to 1 gram of protein per kilogram of body weight. So, for example, if you weigh um, 70 kilos, then daily you will need about 56 to 70 grams of protein protein. Now if you perform a lot of resistance exercise or weight training and um, then you will require slightly more just because you're putting more demand on your muscles and we know that protein is important for our muscles too. Um, you will need about 1.2 to 1.5 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight um, and the same goes if you are pregnant as well. So being pregnant does put slightly more demands on the female body. So again, about 1.2 uh, grams of protein is needed. So that might be just um, an extra snack that is higher in protein or a bit more protein at mealtimes. Um, so are you getting enough? Now, this would be something that you would need to look at within your own personal diet um, in order to answer that question. But what I do stress is that whenever you sit down, to, particularly at a meal, but also get into the habit of doing this at snacks as well, is to ask yourself, where is my protein? Now, examples of protein are things like chicken, meat, fish, eggs, um, tofu, beans, lentils, chickpeas, Greek yogurt um, and nuts, so almonds, for example. So just to give you a few examples, um, a 230 gram serving of cod, so a standard cod fillet, contains about 40 grams of protein. Um, 100 grams of, of salmon contains about 22 grams of protein. And 170 grams, which is kind of a standard um, size pot, so single serve of Greek yogurt contains 15 grams of protein. So you can see that these sources do contain a fair amount of protein, um, but you just need to be mindful of getting them in at the different points throughout the day. Um, another example is almonds. So 25 grams, which would be a small handful, would be about 6.5 grams of protein. So that might be a really good snack and a good way to bolster up your protein intake. So I hope this has been helpful and do shoot any questions you have over to me. See you next time.